So just earlier today, I uh, posted a video with this image talking about different ways to boost saturation. Um, you guys can check out that video if you want to see it. It just changes blend mode and, and talks about uh, the different ways that we can boost saturation and, and smarter ways to get more pleasing results. Anyway, in that video, I mentioned that we could also do saturation compression and saturation contrast enhancement, right? And then uh, that's fine. I had talked about that before, like a year or two ago. And uh, I got an email about it, actually, about what does that mean? And so I thought, OK, I'll make a video, another one, another one about it, because it's been a little while. And I think that other video was a short or a reel on Instagram. Now, I'll preface this before we talk about um, saturation, compression and contrast. I'll preface this by saying this is not the most practical thing in the world. If anything, you can get an idea of how to manipulate the data in your images. We're going to talk a little color science, how to manipulate the data in your image in a way that could potentially be creative. I don't know. OK, but let me show you what I'm talking about. Here's the same image from the previous video. All right. I'm going to duplicate the background layer. First thing we're going to do, go to filter, other, HSB, HSL. So we're going to change from RGB, where we're starting, to HSB. In this case, it doesn't matter if we do B or L, which is brightness or luminosity, because all we care about is the S, which is saturation. Now, if you're not familiar with using this uh, filter, and it's a little strange, I know, but the way it works is your end, your end result is always crazy, but you go to your channels. If you don't have your channels open, go to Window, go down to Channels. You go to Channels. Now, your, your, your channels have been reassigned, if you will, RGB to HSL. R goes to H. That's hue. So this is actually it, basically a monochrome hue map, and it's a whole discussion unto itself, okay? S is now green, okay? What your green was. This is your saturation, basically a saturation map in some ways, if you know how to look at it that way. Now, this one, this is our B. This is our, I think, did we do B or L? I can't remember. This is B. This is our brightness, and that's cool. Brightness data is, in, is useful for things as well. But what does this mean? Look, let's look at our image. Now, we remember the white sand or the gypsum is very low saturation. If this was a saturation mask, you can see that the gypsum is black. In other words, not much saturation. The sky, very white, very bright, because there's a lot of blue in there, a lot of saturated blue, and everything in between. Even the sand on Chelsea is black because that's low saturation. But here's the thing. We can modify this, quote, channel right now. So let's hit Command L, Command or Control L. It's a great way to do it. So if we move this slider in, we make more uh, dark areas. More of the areas that are in the, in the lower saturation are going to get even lower, right? So we're bringing anything that ends up black will be zero saturation. We don't want to do that. If we brighten all the way like this, anything that ends up in pure white is maximum saturation. You see where we're going with this. So let's exaggerate. Let's make it 25 on that end and make it 230 on this end. This is effectively from there to there, OK? You know what? Let's make it a little stronger for demo purposes. Let's go ahead and put it 30 and 225. You can see where we're going with this, can't you? We're adding contrast to the saturation channel, which is where we are right now. Hit OK. Now we go back to the RGB. We can go back to layers as well. Filter, other, HSB, HSL. But now we go backwards from HSB to RGB. And we're done. Let's compare, shall we? Zoom in just a little bit. So this is our saturation contrast enhanced version of the image. And there's the original. Saturation contrast, original. Saturation contrast, original. If you look really carefully, come down here. Let's go into the like where her legs are in the sand. If we turn it on, the legs, and especially in the saturated areas, get stronger. The highlight of the leg gets more neutral because that already started low. We've made it lower. And the sand on her leg gets more neutral as well as the sand on the ground. So sometimes it creates a cool effect. And if I'm struggling with uh, you know, what I'm doing with my saturation on a shot that has a lot of neutral elements. And I'm not really sure. Every now and then I'll try this. Not, not super practical. And you can definitely set it up into an action. You have to start with a raster layer, you know, like a flattened version of the image. You can't just pop out an adjustment layer to do it. You kind of have to commit. You can't really undo it. <laughs> you got to redo it if you want, right? But again, it's not just um, mask out the sand and don't saturate it and saturate everything else. No, 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 no. It's a way of adding saturation more profoundly on the already saturated areas and removing saturation more profoundly on the already desaturated areas. And then a nice gradient, everything in between. So you get interesting results. Sometimes they're great. 
and sometimes they're a disaster. But still, we kind of, if that makes sense, right? Saturation contrast. We're spreading and, and enhancing the contrast between the saturated points and the low saturated points. Now, we can also do saturation compression, which is the opposite. Let's delete that a minute. Actually, I'm going to hold on to that one and just hide it. Let's duplicate. We're going to go back to HSB HSL, run it in the appropriate direction. We're starting in RGB. There we go. Now, we go back to our channels and go to green. We're going to open up levels again, Command or Control L, but this time we're going to use the output levels. You probably see where that's going. <laughs> 225 was it, yes. Okay, so now by bringing in the maximum white, we're limiting the maximum amount of saturation. By bringing up the maximum black, we're increasing the minimum amount of saturation. That is effectively saturation compression. Now, those results can be not very useful, but we're going to look at it anyway. Let's go back to our RGB. Filter. And then we're going to go backwards from HSB to RGB. And there's our result. Now, if we turn it off, there's the original image and there's saturation compression. Do you remember what we talked about in the previous video? If we start bringing saturation where we really don't want it, the gypsum, we start seeing all kinds of color artifacting. Look where it broke down over here, right? That's probably because of the light fall off there. That's some kind of gamut issue there. And when you enhance the color, you bring out that noise, it looks bad. Not to mention the gypsum just went yellow, the sky went muted, her tan went muted. It's not, in my opinion, an appealing thing. We can really see a dramatic difference with our saturation contrast boost. Look at that one. See how much more appealing that is compared to even the original? There's the original, there's a saturation contrast, and there's saturation compression. Of course, I didn't have to do it that strong. You can experiment with it. And sometimes, every now and then, when you have an image with a lot of activity in it, what I mean is that it's very busy, lots of texture, lots of colors, lots of different things to look at, lots of different layers, Often, um, or not often, I should say, every now and then, saturation, compression makes an image kind of come together a little bit better. And I, I do it again when there's nothing else working for me and I just want to see, but not very often. Usually saturation, compression of any kind, even a small amount, looks pretty bad um, in my opinion, but it can definitely be used for experimental things. Whereas saturation, contrast really to me can be a salvation so and i didn't actually do it on these edits because i did these edits a couple months ago i didn't actually do it because i was pretty pleased with a little bit of the yellow tan tone in the, in the gypsum and if you've been out there to white sand you know that it has that like i don't know three four five percent yellow to it it's not exactly pure white but that's nature for you right um so i didn't want to go entirely too perfectly white i wanted to keep it somewhat natural but i gotta admit this uh this saturation contrast looks pretty nice here so again it's something to play with it's not a cure-all solution for everything but it's kind of fun every now and then just don't forget watch the video again because i know it can be confusing using the hsb hsl um filter if you've never used it before but if you have any questions leave a comment below